Sadhu Sangha Nama Kirtan Bhagavat Sravan Mathura Vasa Sri Mutira Sadaya Seva There are five most powerful angas, limbs of devotional service. First, Sadhu Sangha, the association of saintly personalities. So here we are very fortunate that very elevated Vaishnavas like our Bhujapad Sri Bhati Shabarani Didi, Krishna Nand Prabhu, Krishna Chandra Prabhu, Prem Prayan Prabhu, Dalai Maurari, Oh, our Prajanath Prabhu. Not only that, but hiding very, very humbly over there is Buddha Prabhu, a very near and dear disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And even hiding behind him is Arista Nasana Prabhu. Another extremely, very rustic, elevated disciple of Srila Prabhupada. These devotees have been serving their guru since before I was born. So what can I say? I feel myself extremely fortunate to be in their association. Because Sadhu Sangha is very potent. Sadhu Sangha and in Sadhu Sangha, Nam Kirtan. Bhagavat Sravan, here in Srimad Bhagavatam. Simutir Nakvas, residing in a holy place. Well, we heard from Sundar how this is a holy place. And also, Jekani Vaishnavan, Sakani Vrindavan. Where the Vaishnavas are, that place is Vrindavan. And Srimutir Sadhya Sevan, every morning 
Mangalati, the service to the deities. So these five activities of devotional service, they have such power. Srila Bhupa Goswami Pahak said, Duru at Buddha Virya Sin, Sraddha Dure Stupanjake, Yatra Sopa Pisamlanda, Sadhyam Bhav Jalmani. It means the power, the potential in these practices of bhakti is Duru. That means it's inconceivable. There are no words to describe it. Even the scripture cannot come to the end of the description of the power and potential of these activities of bhakti. And then he gives an example. Sraddha dhure is to panchake yatra swalpa pisambandasa dhyam bhava jamani. They are so powerful that even if Sraddha dhure means you are far away from Sraddha. Perhaps you have heard that bhakti is a process that has steps. And the first one is Adol Sraddha, first have faith. And then you have to go through so many steps. Sraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana, Kriya, Natanriti, Nishtaru, Jasati, then Bhav comes. But Sri Rupa Swami part is saying, even you are far away from that first step, Sraddha. But if you have a slight touch, of these one of even one of these five angas of bhakti, then satyam bhava jamane, you can at once attain bhav. That means ecstatic, powerful, deep, loving, spontaneous, unconditional relationship of love with Sri Krishna. It can appear in heart in a moment. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha Shava, Sava Lava Mantra, in just a moment it can come. But there's some small print. Some condition on the contract. <laughs> Put your glasses on. <laughs> and the word satyam means the condition is we have to be sati. Sati means open hearted, smooth hearted, not critical and not hypocritical. My like Gurudev used to translate sati. Pure hearted means not critical of others, that you can criticize yourself. That's actually quite healthy. <laughs> If we criticize ourselves, we can progress. So, if a person is not critical of others, and not hypocritical, not pretending, then by a slight touch with these practices of bhakti, then even if your faith is not developed, but bhav can come. How is it that bhav comes? Bhava bhava go janatoya da bhavetsh, janasita yapsutu satsamagama, Satsangamo yahi tadaiva sapgato paravareshe jai twai jaya te rati. I remember I was in Singapore about in, uh, 97 and Gurudev called me and said, Learn this verse, Baba Baba Guru Janto Yadapaj. It's very deep. It says that when a person has been wandering throughout many lifetimes in this material world, and their sojourn is about to end, then they get Sadhu Sangha. That means, here the verse is saying, you become liberated from this world and then you get Sadhu Sangha. Actually you get Sadhu Sangha first, then you're liberated. But Srimad Bhaktam is saying the other way around because it's a poetic device. This poetic device is called Atishayukti Alankar. It's the ornament of an exaggeration to make a strong point. If there's a strong warrior, one might say, the, the villain fell to the ground and the warrior drew his sword. It means, actually he drew his sword first, then the villain fell to the ground. But, just to give the impression that it's so fast that you can't tell which happened first. That's the power of Sadhu Sangha. It's so powerful, it's so fast, yeah? The jiva has been millions of lifetimes traveling in this world. And when they get Sadhu Sangha, before you know it, you'll be in the Lord Vrinda. <laughs> this is how potential is the association of pure devotees. Because, here it is said, Satsangha Yahi Tadaiva Satkato. When we hear the pastimes of Krishna, in the association of realized devotees. Then Satkato. The word Satkato, he means a sporty. 
a sporty. Sporty means boasting. Sport. That is that in one's heart there's a sudden appearance, a vision of the beauty of Krishna. And it might only be for 0.00001 of a second. But during these seven days that you're here, during these seven days that we're hearing, chanting, dancing, and engaging all the activities of bhakti, the potential is there that just for one split second, one will feel the sporty, the appearance of the sweetness of Krishna in one's heart. And then that's it. One's life is changed forever. You, there's no going back after that. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Yat Sevaya Bhagavata Kutas Tasya Madhudrisha Rati Raso Bhagatriva Padeo Vyasanadana. There is extreme power in service to pure devo devotees. Do you know how Shamarani Gidi has served Srila Prabhupada? Personally trained by Srila Prabhupada in painting the windows to the spiritual world. Painting the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and, and Sri Krishna. And then also since the, about 1990, also, 30 years, serving Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. What's the result of this service? So Srimad Bhagavatam is telling us what result comes when a person has given their life to serving a great devotee. Yat Sevya Bhagavata Kutastasya Kutastasya Krishna here is called Kutasta. He is fixed in time. We can grow old. Times can change. Empires can rise and fall. But Krishna is eternally young and sweet and beautiful. And his pastimes are going on. So he is fixed Kutasta. And Kutasta means, Kut also means the tip of a mountain. So that Krishna is Bhanka chite musukaya kela Sundara bhagna dikai Lochan talape mina sola Palachin kalpa vihai Shri Govardhan pasi sabri Pure devotees are praying. Oh, son of Nanda Maharaj, sweet and tender boy, I cannot live without you. You always cooked Astasya, playing at Giraj Govinda. And how beautiful when you smile, when you glance, when I see your face. Then my eyes become like fish out of water. You know? If you take a fish out of water, they just flap it in anxiety. So when my eyes see the pure devotees say, when my eyes see that beauty of Sri Krishna playing at Govardhan, they become like fish out of water. I cannot see enough. And then when the eyelids blink, you know, it seems like thousands of years of separation just from the blinking of the eye. In the caves and kunjas of Viraj Govardhan, Radha and Krishna always enjoying their beautiful pastimes. Even though Radha and Krishna they meet together again and again. For time with no beginning and no middle and no end. But when they see each other, they see each other with such a fresh, intense love and such greed that Krishna said, Ko Radhika says, Kobala, who's that boy? Who is that boy? I've never seen him before. Even when they embrace and their pleasure goes to the highest point, then the next moment evaporates completely and they feel as if they have never met. This brain comes to those who serve the pure devotees. So Rati Raso Bhavet Tivra. This Rati is a Tivra. This love, this Rasa, he's so tremendous, so intense. It is inconceivable 
When we use this word love in the material world, we have no idea what is the actual transcendental love of Radha Krishna. So, Rati Raso Bhavet Triva Bhadeo Vyasanadana. And when one develops that love for the lotus feet of Krishna, then all suffering goes away. Or, Pario Vyasanadana means when that love comes in one's heart, then Krishna himself becomes very desperate to meet with you and serve you. And Krishna comes to his devotee and said, Oh, you've been dancing so much in the kirtan. Can I massage your feet? This is, the, this is the potential. This is the power of Sadhu Sangha. This is the power of Nam Sankirtan. And we are all most fortunate to come here to participate in this intensive Bhakti Yoga retreat. But there's a choice. And that choice is with each one of us. That this week can be like a holiday. It can be like a social event. We're meeting with friends and devotees who we haven't seen for perhaps a year or more. Or it can be complete unconditional surrender. Coming in the morning at 5 o'clock to Mangalati. Then sitting still like a statue and taking full shelter of Nam Prabhu for the Japa period. Attending as many classes as we can. <laughs> and if someone will do that, it will be a struggle. It may be difficult. You know, this material world, there's this earth, Bhur, Deva, Swaha, and the other planetary systems. And then beyond Brahmalok, there is the Viraja River. The Viraja River. And then beyond that, the spiritual world begins. So the Viraja River, in the Vedas it is called the mm, mm, Ve Vedanga Swayed, the perspiration of the Vedas. That river that separates the material world from the spiritual world is called Viraja. And it's called, it's called Vedanga Swayed, the perspiration of the Vedas. It has a very profound poetic meaning. It means that if you want to go from this world to that world, you will have to sweat. You will have to perspire. The hard endeavor to understand the teachings of the Vedas and the hard endeavor to do one's daily sadhana, attend all the Mangalatiks and the Japa and all the classes and kirtans from morning to it never stops here, it goes until 12 o'clock. <laughs> So to do that, it's sweat. But one has to go through the river of sweat to attain uh, the spiritual world. And then a person will truly, truly experience the full potential of this Bhakti festival. Hare Krishna.